Welcome everyone today. Let's discuss chapter 11 of uh, what they forgot to teach about in our book. Okay. Um, the chapter is called Debugging in R. Just uh, from, so this is again, mostly notes, all, all the notes are from, from that book, um, but with sort of my take or my thoughts uh, point of view. So um, they, they start this section on, you know, the like officially what is debugging and to understand that we, we must, you know, we, we all are writing our scripts, functions, and, you know, apps and in R and everything is great as long as they work. But life is not a bed of roses and we all inadvertently, you know, face some errors and bugs. And that's where we, we you know, that's exactly where we need debugging or the process of identifying those errors and issues and bugs and trying to fix them is, is, the, is, is what is called debugging. So, um, in this uh, chapter is you know this whole chapter is is focused on uh, understanding all the options that are available or what are the different debugging strategies that we can use and they are helpful uh, in different situations and scenarios depending on where you are in the code is this your code is this somebody else's code uh, and I'll, I'll talk about you know what that means someone else's code and uh, you know whether you want to use in console or you want to use our studio as your tool of choice for debugging purposes um, so when it's, it's your own code, you know, you have the flexibility of adding, updating anything in your code. So a couple of things, uh, or functions that are helpful are, uh, is this whole list. And I have actually rearranged them more or less from my, um, comfort or ease of how I find them or, or the frequency of how I use them. Um, so print function is, uh, you know, something that I use heavily. It's, I mean, I, maybe it's not the recommended method, but uh, in, in my head, it makes it a lot easier when, you know, I'm working on a function or maybe a set of, you know, lines of code in a script uh, and you experience an error. So, so for example, if it's in a function, which is doing maybe, you know, which has like four or five lines of code in between, within that, uh, you know, just being able to make sure that, uh, maybe let's say print a data frame and you want to see like the head of uh, that data frame that gives you a sense of, uh, you know, if this function is not working properly and intermediate steps you're able to print that, that gives you a set, that gives you an idea of, okay, you know, up to first two lines of code, it's working fine. Or, you know, the, the uh, constant that you pass that has the right value or not. So, so those kind of um, issues can be identified with the print statements. So that's how it's useful. Uh, and it, in the text, it is also mentioned that you could also similarly, you could also use a function called structure or str. You could pass, you know, whatever your variable is. Um, and I think one thing when, when I was preparing for this presentation, I wanted to highlight that, you know, you could use print and str for, uh, you know, whether it's a constant or whether it's a, we have a vector or a data frame. So any sort of data that you're working with or any variable that you have, the arguments that you're passing to the function, you can just use print and str for anything and everything, uh, anything that you think is, uh, could be a cause of concern. And I guess that art also you develop as the more, the more you work with your data, the more you work with your lines of code. Um, so uh, I guess the, in terms of trying to think about if there are any challenges to this uh, approach, uh, it being that, you know, when you leave out that print statement in your function, even after you're done debugging, then it's just some extra set of printing that's happening. And, and in some situations it, it is preferred, but, but maybe not all the time. So every situation, uh, you know, that printing, uh, and then seeing that, you know, some output in your console or maybe in some other mode output mode may not be a desirable situation. So that's, uh, you know, you might want to, um, figure out or balance out where you want to, where, do you want that or not, um, a browser option or a browser function or a browser call is, is another option where you can, uh, where basically you literally type the word browser in your function or in your code script, um, at a point where you believe you're, ex you know, you're experiencing that error. Or um, another way to think about it is you have, let's say, you know, 100 lines of code, you're running it, and, you know, maybe at line 43, uh, something is not working right. So maybe if, you know, even if you're sequentially running something. So now at that point, you want to add a browser call there, like literally you type it out there. And what that allows you to do is without 
um, I guess without breaking the flow is a wrong statement, but it, by being able to run everything before you experience the error, you can see, uh, you know, it, it brings you to the environment where, where you can check uh, what are the values so far in, in, your, in, in the current environment state. Uh, it will, you are able to, um, you know, sort of figure out if maybe the input variables that you are, that you are using in the following statements, which is causing an error, do they exist or not? So, um, and, and I think I'll talk about that a little more in detail. So trace back is another on, one. Wait, which, wait, um, before you go on, uh, yeah. we're seeing your, our studio and I think you think we're seeing your slides. Yes. Okay. <laughs> we can I see it that I can belong, but yeah. <laughs> okay. Good call. So you can see the screen now, the deck. Yes. Yeah, now it works. <laughs> uh, Mohammed, did you have a question? Now it works. Okay, perfect. <laughs> uh, all right. And so, yeah, so the, the final one in, in this section is traceback. And um, um, theoretically speaking, I think it's one of the easiest approach, I, the way I have read it is you know whenever you see an error just throw, you know write the traceback uh, function call in the console and it will tell you uh, it will basically just picks up the gives you the trace of the last error that happened uh, and again we'll we'll discuss uh, this thing again in a bit of a detail then others code so uh, when I initially was reading and I was like, oh, I have been in situations where, you know, I am, you know, I come in, in, a new team into a team and I have to now, you know, use somebody else's code and I have to, you know, start working with it. And in many times, obviously, there'll be things that don't run or, you know, issues happen and all. But in, in this particular section, what, what we really mean by others code is mostly when we don't have control over uh, or, or you know rights to update those things so uh, specifically you know other packages that have already been built out and one of the examples that they talk about is ggplot2 and maybe one function within ggplot2 is giving you some error so you can use these techniques to uh, sort of dig, dig deeper into the code of that specific function and, and this is that section which I, I am not too uh, expert at. So maybe we can uh, play around with it together. Um, so recover is one function. Then we have debug and trace. Uh, I guess we, when we maybe play around, we'll know more, but recover, recover is, uh, the way recover is used is more as an error handler. And, you know, you set the options and make those changes. Uh, I think this is something that you can also Put it in your R profile if that if I remember reading it correctly. Debug is uh, where you basically pass the inside the debug function call. You you pass the function name that is causing an issue in as an argument, and then trace um, is similar to traceback, but um, again what you pass into the uh, as an argument into trace call a trace function call is how it will start to uh, give you the track. Uh, um, Call stack trace. Um, okay, let's let's start uh, looking a little deeper into how these things work. So, um, so obviously, when you uh, you can only use print function um, in general when you know where an occur where an error occurs. But to find out why is you know how this print would be helpful for you. Um, although this this is how the text says when you know where a print occurs. I mean, uh, sorry, when where an error occurs. Although I feel that you know, once you develop that habit or you know mindset, I generally now tend to put it at multiple places where I think like you know now here I have like one output that has been created or uh, you know a set a bunch of uh, values have been assigned and maybe something could have could go wrong here at this place. So I'll, I'll put it as milestone at multiple places so that I know when this you know out of three print statements where something is falling or something is not looking right. So, you know, instead of having to look at 10 lines, now I know where maybe only two lines or the third line or the fifth line is where I have to look. Um, so that that that's how it helps me. So a very simple example, uh, actually, no, it, that example also is it's not so reasonable, but let's move forward. So um, so when, when you want to really find out why uh, something is not working as you expect it to, most often than not, it is, you know, the unexpected inputs that are passed to the uh, to your functions as arguments is what is causing it. Um, and like, like I said, I think primarily this is what I have seen as uh, 
being the issue in in a lot of our uh, debugging statement when you think you're passing a vector but you actually sent out a column name of a, co a column column of a data frame but you know it or, or vice versa like, you know where you're thinking that you're passing a constant but it is expecting a vector and and all those situations are uh, where you would see those errors and again it may not be a situation which always happens but you know only when um so for example i do a lot of you know functions where i have you know maybe multiple group bys and and whatnot but if i don't want to send anything in a group by so if i pass a null then it that group by statement if if i don't handle it properly it would break so even if i give correct inputs the function is going to work fine but if the inputs are not right then it starts to falter so um so yeah, uh, they, the you know the authors suggest that you should use print extensively, and uh, again str uh, or the structure function to understand what your input types are. Um, and I think in maybe rare cases you might also even, I mean you could think of it as intermediate outputs also could uh, also use this um, as as un understanding that skill. Um, I'm trying to think. I think I had something in mind for this example, but. Uh, yeah, so so this is like a very extremely simple example that I thought I would play around with in the future, in the subsequent slides, but I, I didn't do so much. But even for this example, uh, and this was my first, I think, attempt to understanding the testing concepts where I went for, a, a you know, the Kata club or something um, back in Boston a couple of years ago. So if I if I want to write my own some function, right? And then uh, I want to say that I, you know, like when when you're programming and you don't do testing, you are like, oh, like how simple is this? So what are you asking me to do? And you say, okay, function pass the two arguments, I sum them, and then I return it. All right, cool. In this case, I didn't do return because I mean it's, it's simple. So now, um, yeah, all right. This you you pass the right inputs to it, it works fine, absolutely. I tested this. I said okay, five and seven, it gave me twelve. Uh, that's what it should be, right? <laughs> but I never thought that someone else can give an input of, you know, two and a, and then then my function doesn't know how to um, work with this. So if maybe if I had added a print a statement here saying, okay, this is my a, like you know, literally giving a message saying this is my a, the value of a is equal to, and the value of b is equal to, or whatever, or I have a stop statements here, you know, it, it would sort of give you one way of error handling. Um, in in this uh, situation uh all right so next uh let's talk about browser so i think uh, how to do it is uh, like i already said so you had to literally on, add a browser function call oh. mohammed had something right yeah uh, I, I had a comment so in the in the previous example i think also you could use the like to control the the workflow in in the function by using stop if or yeah. Yeah, so yes. I, I don't I don't do a lot of function. Usually I do more of the analysis, but this mm -hmm. is what I usually see like uh, stop if st statement. Yeah. yeah. Right, stop right, if right, not. Definitely. Stop and yeah. stop if not. Yeah. yeah. Stop if not is the main one where you know you'll look for is this an integer? Is this does it have length one? Um because you know in this case, you may or may not be expecting A and B to you know, are you expecting vectors? Are you expecting just one value? Um, here, a vector would be fine, but other cases it might not be. So yeah, that is definitely um, a whole class of things <laughs> to uh, to do in functions to, to help yourself and to help your users because, yes. which often, you know, often the user is me, but uh, letting me know why it failed, like, you know, putting in those explicit things is definitely, kind of the step beyond debugging when you, you know, if you keep having to debug something because mm -hmm. you're passing the wrong variable type, putting explicit error messages in of, hey, you passed the wrong error, uh, uh, the wrong variable type, um, that, that can be super helpful for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so for browser, um... You for I mean the the way to use browser is actually I I only recently find in just by reading this I found out that you could also use options 
uh, like you could set the options at the top in your script and say error is equal to browser. So whenever you uh, encounter an error, it'll you know browse into that function and and give you that um, I think a, a different console for that. But generally, uh, I have I I mean I'm used to just adding browser wherever I think that there is an error or wherever it you know feels like this object is is causing an issue and then you figure out maybe it's not this and then step further so you keep updating uh that um uh, and I, I technically speaking the the biggest challenge that you always end up with browser not with the debugging part of it but once you're done then you tend to forget uh you know your browser within the function there itself and then you're like okay you come back to it and then you comment it um until you you know you fix your uh, the like bugs in the code uh but i mean I, I don't find it that it happens yes it, it always almost happens that you know even after the end you would end up running once or twice with the browser and then like oh should i forgot then you comment it um but i mean that's like that's considered like one of its biggest issues and alternate to that is um what is it called the r studio Let's see, I get the word. And then we'll get to this, but yeah, um, this one, breakpoints that you have in the editor. Um, but uh, yeah, let's see. So it uh, when, so when you use a browser and when you're running your function, it'll run any R command uh, to look at the objects in. So for example, it you, you put this browser in maybe in a fifth line of your um, you know function, which is 10 lines. Now, what will happen is it will run that, it will, you know, do that function call. Whenever you that function call is encountered, it will run those previous lines. And then it will open up that uh, function console for you. And what that allows is that, you know, without um, having to manually run those lines of codes, you can actually see what argument values are being passed and what, what like what is the current state of that environment, that function, like, you know, for all those variables that are in the function scope. So, um, so uh, I mean, some of the things that was were mentioned were, you know, in, when you are in that console, you can try doing ls, which is basically list the uh, variables or the environment, environment variables that you have. So that, first of all, that just shows you, uh, you know, whether the variable that has been used in the subsequent step or which is failing, has that been created or not? Because it could, I mean, again, for, for some of the reasons we discussed earlier or for any other reason, Maybe that uh, object was not created, and hence, you know, your next step is failing. Or uh, again, print statement. You can you can do a print of, or you can check a value of the variable. You know, just by typing that variable there itself to see um, does it contain the right value. And again, you could still do str on that function. Just for example, again, to see if uh, the variable that you're working with is it uh, is it uh, actually a constant is it a vector is it or maybe it's a vector maybe when it should be data frame so all those things you know right in that window you can just see like within that environment of the function like what the current state is how the values are looking um again even you know just print the name of the data frame that is created and see if uh, maybe it's filtering right or not so then you you know it, it gives you a sense that maybe that something is wrong with that filter statement um yeah, and you know that's how it um, is really helpful. Uh, and it also mentioned something called a where clause in that you can use in that you know in that environment, which was new for me. Uh, and um, so, and then this where uh, this this keyword where in this case it it uh, refers back to what is called stack trace. And uh, I think we'll, we'll uh, discuss that, but. Uh, from uh, uh, so from its link point of view, the way it was redirected to that other piece, essentially what this means is it will tell you, uh, you know, that call trace as to what function is calling which one and then which function is calling which one and to the point where it is breaking. So that call trace can be uh, uh, achieved in that environment with the where clause. Uh, if that's the right way to put it. Um, any questions, any comments? Um, I just wanted to comment that I, uh, I just played to make sure because I don't usually work outside of functions, but you can do all of this mm -hmm. just in analysis code. You know, you can use RStudio and put a breakpoint, you know, the red dot 
um, yeah. just in a script or, or you know, a I think even probably yeah, so in I, Porto, I mean, but yeah, like that. that. Yep. So you just so, click on the left hand side of your uh, line number, and we can do that. And then when you click it again, it just goes off. And this is this is an alternate actually for browser, like I was mentioning. Yeah. Um, this is a browser example, but you can apply it anywhere, like literally anywhere, anytime. And um, um, what was I gonna talk? Um, <laughs> um, and in this case, so basically, like I said, it's an alternate with the benefit that now you don't have to edit it in from your code. So right. it, it brings you to the same environment. So, so yeah, I mean, they're good. almost like equivalent except for writing and then clicking, I think. So um, this is the same thing as browser? Yes. Yes. Yep. Oh my. Okay. <laughs> And so then, yeah, you can just click that in your RStudio code and uh, any, you know, anything. It doesn't have to be a function. It doesn't have to be um, a package, it you know, whatever. It can be anything. And then yeah. when you get to that point in the code, it goes into that mode where you're stepping through. You can still just continue through if you want. Um, and then, of course, you know, turn it off when you've got it fixed. But, uh, it, you know, if you're running into issues when you source some code it helps whether you're in a function or, or you know in a uh situation where you're programming with functions or not so yeah so <laughs> let's now that we're talking about it let's try to play around so i just ran this function which has uh I mean, I don't think I want to explain this. I just picked up these examples. I I put the source and the author name. I I picked up this. I wanted to, like I said, I had, I wanted to, you know, play around with more functions and see those techniques in action more than the theory. But we're still talking about theory today. Um, so this is the function definition. You know, some condition checking. You want to square. You want to cube. So now let's see. And we have a browser call here. So we'll see how that you know environment that I was talking about looks like. So here, uh, you know, your console changes a little bit. And so what, what we're really doing here is it, it shows you where it is in the, fun, you know, which is your active line um, where your, uh, what is it called, compiler? Not really, but, you know, what is going to be, what is currently being executed and what's going to happen next. So, and then your browser change, uh, sorry, your um, console pointer changes to this. Now what this means, and there is also a trace back here. You can see even the environment is different. Now it is uh, for this specific function only. Now, um, so in this function call, your argument is Z and the number I passed in that function call was three. So Z is assigned the value three. Um, so let's see, so I can type here Z as it is. I can check structure of Z, uh, you know, all those things that I was saying. And the other thing that uh, sort of becomes important here is you could you could use these um, options, which you would not see otherwise, but this is only, you know, it, it is only brought up by the uh, uh, breakpoint or the browser uh, usage. So you could uh, choose to step through to the next step, like, you know, next line of code. You might want to step into this. So, you know, while you're, you're still look, going to stay in this uh, line, but you want to check deeper values. Um, and, and John, correct me um, if I'm saying this wrong. So this is supposed to be stepped into the current function call. And then this is, uh, you want to execute the remainder of the current function loop. Um, and there are shortcuts for that too. So if you want to use go next, you press N. Uh, and press enter this you for stepping in you say s and uh, i'm not sure if this one has a shortcut but this says c is uh, when you say okay finish executing what you're doing and get out of this browser call and then stop or capital q for quitting this whole browser session um yeah and the same would happen if i had put a you know, breakpoint there, and then I would have made the function call, the exact same, uh, this thing would come. All right. So, oh, I should stop it and everything else will go. And let's see, oops. 
Um, and then one line that's missing is the same thing, N, S, and Q was what I had written. Um, moving forward, trace back. Um, so trace back, also known as stack, stack trace, back trace, call stack, all of that. Um, and and I think this, I, I really like this line, uh, you know, very good summary. And it makes me think that, oh my God, this is amazing um, sort of way to get the you know entire summary of how your program arrived at that error. But generally the way I've seen it, and I think I relate this a lot to a shiny app uh, error, uh, but most of the times those, uh, like a, a big part of that trace is always those internal functions and all. And I'm like, I never understand that unless I see that line where it actually is breaking. I'm like, okay, this line is the culprit, uh, but it's easier. I think in the shiny app, but, um, so while I was reading through this, the only thing that I found or the only thing that I understood was that, you know, if once you encounter an error and right next. Uh, statement that you write is a trace back. That's when you know you don't need to pass anything. So in that way, it is very simple that you just write trace back, and it will give you some information about you know what that error relates to. Again, same. It will give you a trace of um, you know what was your function call, and then how does that lead up to that error? Um, I think uh, a little similar to hmm, no, not here. I think I, I tried something, but. I, uh, yeah, so let's look at this particular example. Again, this is from that same website. We have um, three uh, functions that are defined F, G, and H. They do some mathematical calculation, right? Now, if I were to call... Um, let's say H with three. One second, let's see if I'm doing it right. If uses G, so I think I should call F because yeah. So let me call F with three, and oh, it ran out of time. Uh, yeah. So I think this was um something that I think I started looking at one of the videos. So that's um so just so think of it as this. So we are currently working in a situation where. We have three defined functions. One uses the other. Second uses the third one. And now, in in this sort of uh, complicates the situation a little bit because we don't know, uh, you know, in in these examples, we don't know where that error is actually coming. So this one was like absolutely um, un, not a comfortable situation to be able to uh, trace back like what exactly was the situation like think of a layman terms, you don't know how do I get back to like where exactly the, the error happened, where in which of these functions the issue was, right? Now, when we do um, like for, for this one, uh, uh, how that uh, speaker was saying is, you know, at least this gives us, this is a better uh, error in the sense that, you know, I can see that there's a log term here. So I can, uh, what I can connect is maybe it's it's failing here. And the other important thing is that, you know, it gives you an op the, the Astro itself is giving you an option to, uh, you know, show tr trace back. And it, the same thing I could have done with writing a trace back and function, and then it will tell me, okay. So I ran this, uh, my, I, my, my function call was F with input of uh, string A, which then calls G and then which then calls H. Now these functions actually need uh, numeric inputs and hence it it's failing at uh, you know, with, with a, a string input. Um, I mean, it also gives us an option to rerun with debug, but uh, I have never done this, but I think this is similar to the debug function, which we'll come to um, in a bit. John, do you have experience? I mean, have you tried this? Uh, like I said, I don't have enough experience uh, okay. using, actually using debugger tools, but yeah, it'll just, um, it'll run it as if you had had uh, debug mode on so but okay. it'll do what we're about to see yeah okay <laughs> yeah so um again so for traceback you can you know just do this traceback function call or you could um what does this mean you could add it as an error handler which we'll call it there, you can put the option 
Um, I don't remember what the option is right now. Just a second. Oh, uh, I think it's this one. So you go yeah. to debug on error, error inspector. Uh, yes, but also um, it's this here. I'm going to put it in the chat so you can, oops, um, you can set that option that I just put in the chat, error equals oh, traceback. Okay. And that what that's yeah. saying, the selling R, that whenever you hit an error, call traceback. Yeah, um, I, it's, that's how they're using uh, error handlers again. Like yeah. I said, I'm not too proficient with these ones, so I'll add this in the deck. <laughs> and then when they say uh, you can put it in your R profile, that is just, you can put exactly that line into your R profile, oh, yeah. which means every time you start an R session, mm -hmm. it will set that up automatically be always in that debug mode in that function. yeah for the traceback mode not really you know not full um not it doesn't go in the browser or anything like that which is the next level that i think we're going to talk about right um, so yeah so this was um you know mostly that part which talks about your own code now the options that our studio gives us or the features that our studio provides us for doing this first one being editor breakpoints same as browser, I think we've talked enough details for that. And I showed how you you do that thing with that red dot. And that's all I know is to edit our breakpoints unless anybody else has any inputs. Okay. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> okay. So the next one uh, that our studio gives us as a feature is um, this one that I just clicked on. Um, and then generally, I think I've seen this, these ones highlighted. I'm not sure why at this point it's not. So the, the text says, uh, you know, you go to debug and on error, you want to say, check your error inspector. Um, and, and I think what this really means is you're telling that whenever there is an error, uh, you change the mode of how it is displayed. Let's, let's actually try this. Well, and so what so that now, setting does is it makes that gray box that you got. Yeah. So instead of just saying error in log Z, non numeric argument to mathematical function, uh -huh. um, it gives you the show trace back and the rerun with debug option when that is turned on. Okay. So let's try it now because yeah. earlier I think we did it with a normal situation. Now we have the uh, inspector on. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the inspector is the normal situation, it turns out. But the level up from that, so if you go to, well, let's go level down. So go to message only. So go up to message only and okay. now run your error code just up. And so there it only tells you the error message. Oh, okay. Okay. And that, so the next step up is it gives you that block. Okay. And then, yeah, break. And then, okay. then let, let's yeah. try that as well. Yeah. And this is the level that I might start uh, playing with. Yeah. So this is the debugger thing yeah. automatically. Oh, this is interesting. Yeah. Because without adding a debug, <laughs> getting into the debug mode. Right. Uh, the browser, whatever, the browser mode, yeah. Debug location is approximately, yeah, this one, this comes. So now it's a, I can... Yeah, it's sorry. a little, it can be a little disorienting if this weren't, I guess this is something that's in the global environment, but um, yeah, R hasn't been defined yet. It's before it defines R, so it only has mm -hmm. Z. It can be, you know, a little bit hard to tell exactly where you are, depending on how this is made. I guess if you're in, uh, mm -hmm. if you're in the middle of sourcing something instead of running it from the console, it would show you the point in the source. But anyway, uh, I am intrigued by this idea. It's one of those things where it might just be annoying to always do this, but it also could be good practice to start to get in the habit of use the debugger, let it figure yeah. things out because i do right I, so because you know the the thing that you said that you know if there's an error here and especially when you have you know when you're working with different files that contain the function right when, right. when you have that bigger code base so if um this is where the error occurred and this function was in that different script so it, it takes you there and you know it automatically continues the debugging from that point that would be very interesting and less yeah. painful, painful yes yes um, and then it lets, you know, you could work there and you can um, change variables and look at variables and yeah. figure out what you can do to make it work and mm -hmm. then, you know, fix it directly. So 
don't know. I think I'm going to play with using that because I've always been really bad about actually using the debugging tools that are in our right. and in our studio. Because I, I remember once I was in a situation where um, I think after making a couple of changes, my function became a bit more complicated than I would have wanted. So when I was trying to make some additional changes, I was like just sort of getting lost in anything new I was trying to do in it. And yeah, I guess if something like this was there, so I don't remember how I fixed it, but obviously it took a lot more time and energy at that point. After it grows, you know, like more than the screen and I'm like, I have to scroll up and down. It was challenging. Um, and maybe, maybe a, you know, a, a tool from here could have been more helpful to yeah. see how things were changing. Um, I'll, yeah, I'm interested to see if this changes my practices um because mm -hmm. it's it's an intriguing idea <laughs> <laughs> sure all right so let's move on um so stopping an error this is useful when trying to hunt down a particular error um i guess just to sort of a good good piece of advice it felt so i i thought i'll just bring it up so that uh, the changes that we did right stopping on error so for the error inspector specifically um so the text says that this specific option is useful when you're trying to hunt down a particular error, which is, I think, similar in the previous cases that we saw, other than print, where it says you, when you know exactly where the error is, or now that I've said it, even browser, we generally, the expectation of the, you know, the essence of browser is that, you know, we know that uh, up until this line, things are working fine. After this is when the error has happened. So we kind of know the location, but we're trying to figure out what is wrong in, in those cases when we use a print or a browser. Um, apparently this uh, is telling us where that error is, like hunting down the error or even the previous thing what was that we did. So breakpoints, yeah, this is the same as browser. So this is a good point. Um, and is it because it essentially is doing traceback under the hood and it is, you know, it is giving us the stack of calls that would then help us do that hunting? Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> cool, cool. All right. So, debug on a specter. Okay. Yeah, same thing. So, it gives us um, the message and let me go back. So this is when we do the the last bit, right? No, the on error. This is message only. And then this one, the gray box is with the error inspector, which is correct. Gives you the details of the error. So yeah, okay. This yeah, that's like the, the normal level. Um, mm -hmm. And then you can go all the way up to where it'll go into the debugger. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that'll be interesting. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think I definitely like the extreme <laughs> case in this case it will tell you where you are um all right so and then the third piece i think is debugging in console debugging console like we're going to what was i writing here um so it goes let's see which section in this book <laughs> done uh yeah so i mean I, i'm not sure why this is like a specifically like a explicit third point We've, we've discussed this and I, I don't see anything new in this section per se. Yeah. Yeah, this uh, is uh, how the browser, you know, this is where the browser takes you. So this is that additional debugging console or even that breakpoint will take you to and we, I think we have- Oh, I, th I think what the call out was for was the buttons versus the just letter codes that they had told us about. Okay. So in our studio, you get buttons mm -hmm. for- next and continue and stop and okay. etc so that's all <laughs> cool. Cool. so yeah we'll move forward so yeah looking into other codes um so yeah the first one or you know first of the facilitating function here is recover you can use it and and it is it's a it is used mostly indirectly as an error handler just by saying you know you set your options saying error is equal to recover um and I have, like I said, I have not used this at all. Uh, maybe we can play around with this. But one thing that I found within that text in the end was that 
this is one thing that is very useful in debugging our markdowns and uh, especially you know looking into the situations where and i have seen these kind of errors a lot in uh, r4ds community also that you know when i'm running things piece by piece in my r markdown script it works fine but then when i knit it then you know it is running into an issue uh, so i mean what i'm thinking is it's not un it's not very common but it's not uncommon to to be in those situations i think i've also had like maybe one of the rare cases been into that situation and it's like really you know drives you crazy like everything is working fine when i run the chunks one by after the other but then you know the the whole report would just not run um so that's what it was saying in that situation you can th set this in in the setup options like right at the top of your like first chunk or something and then uh, you don't use the net, R, net button, but you actually do either a R markdown colon colon render on that report, or you do a net or net function call in the console. That way, it tells you uh, like where the actual error is is happening uh, without. Um, how do I say this? So you know, without uh, breaking your R markdown report as such. Um, but yeah, this might be worth sort of playing around with. Um, do I have more information here? So you can browse on any of the call stack, not just where the error occurred. So I have like one copied function version, like example of this. Maybe we can talk about that, but I think it's worth discussing. I have no sure short idea of what that really means. Like, so what it says is, you know, when uh, when you're running a function um uh and and you say put that in a recover function call it lets you choose you know it, it gives you apparently multiple options or which point you want to uh start your tracking or you know trace backing uh, like a manual trace backing and then you can choose and then you can um uh, yeah you know step through forward from that point so and and i said this is unlike browser because in browser wherever we mention it is going to break at that point and then give you the option to modify things and and check things from that point onwards um but with with the recover you have that option of choosing which level you want to go to to, um, to put that in a little bit more concrete if you flip over to your um our studio window sure and okay yeah that that view right now is perfect that if you went into debug you would start at step 3 because that's where the error is Mm -hmm. But if you if you use recover, it'll give you that list one, two, three, and you can say, oh, I want to go in at one and see what happens at that point and, you know, start my traceback before the actual error. Because, you know, when you're really debugging, most of the time, the error isn't right where the error occurs, yeah. it's somewhere before that. And so mm -hmm. it lets you start a little bit before and kind of trace through, is this doing what I think it's doing? Oh, that variable... Mm -hmm gets one added to it for some reason. Why did that happen? So, sure. but you have to do it with, uh, yeah, I guess you can probably do it that way. So, so should we do it see. this way? Like, yeah. Uh, that function I, call is what I pass into it. Okay, no, so you want to do, <laughs> I was like, um, maybe that works. Uh, it would be So I that. copied one example here. Um, did you write something in chat? Yeah, in the chat, you have to do options error equals recover. And then that'll put you in like the mode of using recover and now do F oh, of okay. quote A. No, no, just okay. F of uh go up twice probably or three times. One more, one more. There. This one? Yep. So do that. So now when it hits an error, it goes right, into recover right. and it says, okay, where do you want to start? Do you want to go in at one? Oh, okay. Do you want to go in at okay. two? Interesting. Um, so it is giving you a trace pack plus an option of where you want to start digging in. Yes. Interesting. So let's try three. Hmm. So that will only run that function. <laughs> uh, okay. Hmm. But I can go back. So okay. how do I? Okay. Quit. <laughs> let's do this again. Okay, so now R is X minus G minus X. Oh, but I don't know. What is X? <laughs> okay. 
Um, it is X, okay, what is R? Okay, this has not run, so. Um, if I do next, last time I just broke it. Maybe I should have done step in. So I actually, I, I think we are getting a little bit of um, different error handlers are worrying with one another. And so it's a little confusing to debug the debugger right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's- You want me to paste this uh, set of questions, uh, this function, so that if you want to play it on. Maybe. Um, Yeah, yeah, I don't know for sure exactly. You know, it's getting, uh, it's making you step through and see your call to the recover. And so it gets a little bit circular um, because once you hit H, it goes into re into recover mode. Um, so I don't know, I just, that's something you'd have to kind of play around with and get used to. Mm -hmm. But in general, the idea is this lets you get the error yeah. before the error happens <laughs> yeah yeah this gives you the flexibility to move around up and down. yeah but so then after that do i have to reset the option to something yeah or just uh you can control shift f10 and that'll reset your browser or your um your session or just yeah just reset it that way that that is effectively setting that option okay. um Okay, All right. cool. Interesting. <laughs> uh, yeah, da, 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 da. This is what we saw. The organization started that location, whichever you choose. Um, yeah, and then there is debug function. Uh, I think we did this with that um, setting in our studio, right? Y yeah, Um. no. So what, what this one does, sure, yeah. You're yeah, saying so let's, let's whenever try. that function gets called, I want to enter the debugger. That's what uh, the debug function is saying. It's basically putting a breakpoint at the beginning okay. of that function. Um, and then there's the undebug to turn it off. Right. This, you know, it's just doing it for this session. You know, it's on until you turn it off. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, Mohammed, you have a question? Yeah. So because. Uh, you started talking about ggplot. There was a ggplot example. So I wanted to just uh, bring to your attention this uh, function, which was presented at the R study conference. <laughs> it's called ggtrace. Oh, yeah. We have June. <laughs> yep. Long time uh, R4DS uh, mentor, June Cho. Is ah, the really? author of that. So, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Because I've, yeah, I've, uh, it's I've watched the cool. talk and it was it was it was amazing. Not for debugging, <laughs> but uh, like uh, actually for more for understanding what is going on. Right. But yeah, right. so he actually discussed this with us in in our first cohort of ggplot two book club. Um, mm -hmm. He mentioned that, and, and I guess I, I'm obviously I'm not the expert there, and <laughs> he is. But uh, the essence is that it tells you. So there are three um, parts to that you know, building from the data to getting your final plot. And he, he talked about those stat uh, and, you know, intermediate parts and then how, uh, you know, just one ggplot to call uh, can actually, like how much work it does in the back end. And then if, uh, like if something goes wrong when you're not able to get to the plot that you want, you can actually see those intermediate pieces that will tell you, you know, how, if your data is not being like, aggregated properly and, and all that. So, Again, in, in that sense, the trace, you know, is still the same meaning that it tells you what goes in between from, from that function call to your final output. Yeah, I, from what I recall from the video, which I watched like, I think a month or more ago, <laughs> I think th this is it. But but for me, what, what I really admired is that uh, it, uh, it, it took away some magic from ggplot like now <laughs> i can actually i feel more have more courage to interrogate each part of of ggplot and each part of the code so yeah uh -huh. yeah and i think that's a lot of um you know what debugging can help with is it's showing you step by step what is happening under the hood yeah and just before we move on from debug although we got to wrap up pretty quick here but uh 
there's the function debug once that they don't mm -hmm. really talk about in the book, but that it's the same thing, except it's just the next time I call this function run the debugger. It's so you don't have to turn on or you don't have to run on debug. It just undebug. It does the debug and then it does on debug. Um, and the other thing is someone pointed out to me once that they think of debug once at, they pronounce it as if it's uh, like Beyonce debug on say. <laughs> And that just cracks me up every time. So I, yeah. I, I like to debug on say my functions. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I also had that question because I had somewhere read this before, like, you know, when I had probably first encountered debug function and I was like, I think there was something like debug once, but I didn't see that in this book. <laughs> but yeah, I think, and it's, it's interesting because uh, the same way, right? You would, if you do this debug, set it, and then you forget to undebug, um, you know, it just fixes that problem of you want to just do it once. Right. But um, and, and thinking about it in a different way, I you know when we and I just wrote it this and you we were talking about the service thinking. This is, uh, I mean now those words are starting to become clear to me. So you are actually when when you do debug on this you know specific function, which uh, by the essence is you know somebody else's function or somebody else's package and function, we are sort of doing. Uh, a browser call on that function directly. Right? Yes. Yeah. And then, or or like, and I think you said this, and and I that caught my attention. So you, I am putting a breakpoint on their code, and then I have by using undebug, I have to uncheck that red button. Right. So, yes. Yeah. Exactly. Um. I mean, the other thing is you can always that, you know like connection of now I understand what this means. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, you know, if we're following along with this book, one of the things is you just want to restart your R session um, relatively often. So that's the other way to undebug is if you start a new R session, right. that's the debug is off. You so. clean up everything. Yeah. 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 And then uh, I guess just to add like one last thing here is that, you know, it allows you to also uh, like debug, not just the exported function, but you could also do that with the unexported function with an extra colon here. Uh, like generally how we would access any unexported function. Um, so in this case, uh, one example that they have brought up in the text is set last plot. Um, and you know, you could give it three colons after the library name to, to be able to use it. And I think, oh yeah, that's all. I, so uh, this is pretty much, I think one, what I did uh talk about in the beginning itself <laughs> so um trace setting the list recover uh, mm. you know options of error is equal to recover in one of the chunks and then um i guess we're just out of time to talk i mean i plus i don't have too much of to talk about sync function that it said we need to add in your trace oh call. wow yeah um, but maybe something to explore um, later on this is how these are some of the options to um, debug in the R Markdown document browser. You know, obviously, as in when you're running your chunks, it, it might be helpful. Um, but I, I mean, practically speaking, unless uh, if, if you already checked all the chunks piece by piece, um, I personally don't use so much. Um, but yeah, in my functions and in our shiny apps, that's where I found browser extremely helpful. And uh, this is something definitely worth trying to figure out what it's doing. Um, but yeah, that's about my last slide. So we've just hit on that. Yes. yes. I just want to, you know, since they mentioned sync in passing, I want to share this piece of uh, warning message from the sync help. It's make sure you read the sync help before you read sync for anything because sync okay. like changes the way R works <laughs> basically oh, like you can say oh I want all of the messages to now go to a file instead of going to my console mm -hmm. and if you're not careful about it you can make things really super confusing for yourself so mm -hmm. um yeah uh but yeah very cool um this is all very useful tools and I am going to be you know digging deep into this stuff because it's something that I'm just, I'm really bad at actually doing. And I'm, it's dumb to be bad at this because I just make more work for myself that 
I like fake the debugger some, you know, I'll, I'll, oh, I have to set all these values of variables or I can just call mm -hmm. the function with the debugger and all the variables get called or get set during the call. So anyway, I think it's a uh, really useful stuff. And sure. uh, with that, um, I need yeah. to take off. So thank you very much. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pranga. Yes. Bye. 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 Bye.